Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. We are coming to you again uh, from Zoom because of the current wave that we are having in the country. So this is one of the fun videos that we are doing for this month because it's scholarship season. So we are hosting one of our alumni in one of the scholarships and then he is going to introduce himself. Thank you so much for the love we've been receiving on the channel. Keep like, commenting and subscribing to the channel. Welcome to a uh, Real Talk with Pings Tulani. Can you please introduce yourself to uh, my YouTube viewers? Yeah. Well, thank you, Pinky, for having me. Uh, my name is Tulane Babedi. Uh, uh, I was on the Chevening Scholarship. Uh, I was in the 2009-2020 cohort. Uh, I went to the University of Leeds, which is in the city of Leeds. Uh, the city of Leeds is like the largest legal and uh, financial center in England, the second largest in England. And I think it comes third, it comes third after after Edinburgh, if you consider the whole of the UK. So it's like the little London. And I was studying actuarial, I was doing my master's degree in actuarial finance. And yeah, I'm homeless so to like, you know, and yeah, actuarial, happy to be here. Actuarial finance. I don't even know yeah. what that is. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a posh course. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's just another course in finance, yeah. So thank you, Tulani, for coming to the channel. We hear that yeah. you studied actuarial finance and you are studying at the University of Leeds through a Chevin scholarship, correct? Yeah, that's correct. So guys, we thought we should come to you uh, for Tulani to tell us about his experience in the UK. Uh, as some of you may know that the Chevin scholarship is now open. It will close on the 2nd of November. So I'm encouraging everyone who qualifies to apply for the scholarship. I have already uh, shared on my channel how to apply for the scholarship. So Tulani, can you please tell us, first of all, what prompted, prompted you to study in the UK particularly and what led you to apply for this uh, uh, scholarship? Yeah, uh, I think uh, studying in the UK, there's, 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 there's like a lot of reasons and one of them is that, uh, for example, uh, UK and Lesotho have had like a kind of a relationship because of our past, like political past, uh, we were one to colony and almost one, like one out of 10 people that you meet that are very successful, they've either studied in the UK or US. So it comes out as, you know, that place where people study. And the reason why I wanted to be in the UK in the first place, I think it's because it was like, it's, it's an easy, destination it's unlike the other places where you have to first learn the language for two years and then pro uh, i mean progress with your with your studies and uk i think a lot of people agree and i mean there's 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 uh, statistics to it that most of the universities they they're ranked really high in the in the world sure and uh, i think with chevening you have to apply for about three universities and uh, all three that i had applied for they were like in the top hundred of 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 the of the best universities in the world, mm. and I think that's 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 what uh, really prompted me to, to like want to study in the UK. And the other thing is when you read about people's stories that they're shivering because sometimes the, the the thinking of saying I want to go to study in the UK there first has to be a possibility. If you hear people say I studied in the UK through shivering or through Commonwealth scholarship, then it, it sort of says to you that this is actually possible and I want to study there. And the last very important uh, reason is that I, I did actuarial science in, like in my undergrad. And I mean, we sort of learned that the actuarial profession started in the UK. Oh, okay. Uh, England, yeah, it started in the UK. So if, if you want to study anything actuarial, I think you want to study from you know the best or the founding nation of of the profession so for me that was like a professionally or career wise it was like a strategic uh, it was a strategic pick yeah to be in the uk that's where the profession that i'm in was born oh okay that's quite interesting i didn't know this yeah. um so yeah. in, in particular can you please tell us uh, before going to the uk for your masters had you worked before and also, if you had worked before, you don't even have to mention where you worked. 
uh, for mm. how long had you worked and how was it uh, acclimatizing to university life after taking a break from study? What's the university like on campus, the courses that you were taking, the support that you were getting at the University of Leeds, all those? Yeah, so I, I yeah, prior to, to living for, for school in the UK, I was working, uh, I think I actually finished my, my honours in 2016. And then I started work, I think three months, maybe later. And then um, with a different employer, then I came home uh, with a different employer. And then I started working, I think for two years. And then when I got the Shevening Award, it was like two months and like maybe a month uh, that I had with the, the current employer. So what happened is I uh, like, you know, uh, for me, uh, I remember I met you after I got, got that word and, and, and part of the conversation that we had was like, oh guys, I, I just resigned. So I like had to resign at, at my work and um, because I wanted, I wanted to like go to university and I thought that it's such a great opportunity that no one is gonna you know, give it to me. If, if I let it go, it's never gonna come again. Or if I stay at my job, for example, I have to save, I know I, I was trying to do the meds, I'm gonna have to save uh, very aggressively for about 10 years and I still wouldn't be able to like afford the I mean the cost of studying overseas mm -hmm. and I think uh, fortunately my employers were like uh, very like exceedingly nice to me that they, they said no retractor resignation will give you uh, will give you uh, study leave for like a year and then you'll come back and you still have a job and I think I was quite fortunate on that they were exceedingly nice to me and uh, when I got to the UK, it was a nice university life. I mean, I think for the first time in my life, I really enjoyed being at the university. And I think part of it comes from the fact that uh, I never got to worry about a lot of things like food, like money, like uh, safety, my safety. Like it was pretty safe. If you wanted to leave the library at 12 midnight, you could and you'd still feel safe. If you wanted to buy food, you know, you can still get your food and the environment was just so nice like I made a lot of friends inside and outside outside of classroom mm -hmm. some of whom came from countries I didn't even know existed mm -hmm. like Tex and K kills uh, I had a good friend from Kazakhstan I met a lot of guys from Zim even the lecturers as well that are like so nice they give you so much support and I think the the main aim is to see you do well in your studies they want to see you pass so they give you so much support academically, socially, and otherwise. For example, they want to know, how are you doing? How's your girlfriend? How's <laughs> the people back home? Like, how's, how's everything? You know, where, what movie are you watching tonight? So that the environment for learning is quite conducive. And, and they have like excellent library services and learning services that they give, like when you borrow books or when you return them, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite nice. So yeah, I, I had a really good life. Oh, wow, you, you've, touched, you've touched on your academic life and your social life, but also yeah. I like what you are, you are talking when you talk about your employer, obviously employers are not the same. My experience yeah. was that where I was working at the time, they offered me a study leave with you, yeah. you were resigning, but the, you were fortunate enough that they gave you an opportunity to come back again. Because I know a lot yeah. of people, especially in Lesotho and South Africa, because of such yeah. high unemployment rates, people want to apply for the scholarships that are offered full time, but they're always worried. Yeah. What if I have to quit my job? I have a, a family, I have a kid. What if I don't get a job upon my return? But I do believe like you're saying, yeah. it's a once off opportunity. And yeah. with the UK, because it's only one year, honestly, the one year moves so fast that you will not even believe yeah. it. Uh, yeah. You would want to stay again with That's me. True. I, yeah. I had to extend yeah. a bit. I was having yeah. so much fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I also kind of extended by like a month and a few weeks because of COVID, you know, the, the borders were closed at the time and, you know, everyone was going home. And the South African borders were closed like until the president opened the border. So, I had intended to come home. It was like the first week of September, but um, I had to, you know, uh, I couldn't come home. My flights get got canceled, like book another one, it's canceled, another one canceled. <laughs> and yeah, I had to like overstay by like a month. But I, yeah, it's, it's a very nice environment. If, if I had, if I wasn't supposed to come back, I probably would have stayed longer as well. But because of work, I had to like 
okay. like come home yeah. can yeah. you say a bit about about the money and the support that the shivan uh, scholarship gives students in particular because you talked about the university how supportive they are let's talk about the scholarship that we are uh, encouraging basutu to apply for a lot of people like the most popular question i get is the money enough to sustain me while i'm in the uk <laughs> yeah 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 so it's i would con- confidently say yes uh, to be honest it's i mean and to be honest it depends on what i think is quite measured is it depends on your ability to get the right accommodation uh, a lot of people they, they they sort of don't get accommodation in time and they the only option that's left for them is like very expensive accommodation and that it's out on the on the step and but apart from that to be honest and it doesn't matter whether you like in a very, very expensive uh, accommodation or what but shivan in step and is enough to give you a very comfortable life uh, it doesn't give it does not necessarily give you like a luxurious life like you would be doing stuff but it gives you like a very comfortable life you don't worry about food you don't worry about clothes you don't worry about accessories a lot of people <clears throat> you know they bought like very good cell phones when they got there but very nice clothes they got you know laptops mm-hmm. decent food you when you know when your your your, your friends from elsewhere like i had friends from china uh, friends from other countries as well fairly rich countries whose parents you know are funding the the studies and when they plan oh tonight we want to go somewhere you're able to go out with them you know it's not that thing of saying ah i don't have much i can't go out because i don't have money mm-hmm. and i think i can comfortably say the shivering step and just quite enough you don't feel any far different from the other students and and i think that's what's important like it, it's it makes it such a nice environment because i think me particularly i come from a very poor family so when i was in university me too. there's a lot of things <laughs> yeah yeah there's a lot of things i had to sacrifice one day you'd say no i can't have lunch because i don't have money to buy lunch mm. you know but when when you in the uk you don't worry about such things like you have food in the fridge like and decent food i don't mean like like you can go out and eat whatever you want to eat and it still won't you know were you staying on campus or off campus i was staying in a university resident so it's okay. uh, yeah it, it was slightly off campus but it was under the university management so oh okay i think a, a similar thing happened to me i had applied for yeah. accommodation on campus uh, but yeah. i compared between taking a university accommodation on campus and off campus so i yeah, opted yeah. for off campus okay. but the nicest yeah. thing is that the the bus system the university bus system was was passing through my house so you uh, could yeah. go to the university any time of the day or night and like you are yeah. saying it was very very safe safe yeah that's true i was i was only like five minutes five minutes so my my program is is a bit in the business school and a bit in the school of mathematics so i was five minutes walk from the business school so some classes were in the med school so i was like maybe seven eight minutes walk from from the business from the uh uh, uh mathematics oh, school yeah. so it was yeah for me it was like a really great deal like yeah and i think if there's one advice i'd want to give i know this is off topic mm-hmm. that they must try to sort out the accommodation affairs as soon as they can yeah yeah can I know you a lot of just that... say a bit about that because i think it's, it's the most important thing once they receive yeah. their offers what should they start doing yeah i think that uh, they, they need to sort out the, the accommodation see if they can look around on the website what's nice about it is you can from here just look around on the website check which uh which option is the best talk to the alumni if 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 for example you know someone who studied at university of leeds talk to them and ask them what what what's your recommendation you think private accommodation or university accommodation is 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 good if, if, you know it'll advise you accordingly and i think that it's it's one thing that we overlooked that out I'll sort out my accommodation when I get there, but people lose out on very decent, you know, accommodation facilities because they, they didn't do their stuff in time. And, and it's, and it makes sense that, you know, like as long as I get the scholarship, whatever that happens there, I'll see it when I get there. It's, it's always our attitude, but I think it's important now to say, once that's sorted, try to look into accommodation because it's very, it can, it can be a decide of whether you, you're going to enjoy your life or not enjoy your life. Because okay. it runs out, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, Tulani, in closing, can you tell us a bit about 
life in the UK, the social life, the traveling we saw on social media, you were sharing <laughs> for us, your, yeah. your, your life in the UK, traveling a bit. Can you say a bit on that and tell us your experience? I know it was cut short because of COVID-19 in 2020, yeah. but you still had a, a nice time. Yeah. Tell us about that in closing. So luckily for us, like we, um, I had a friend, uh, KB, we got traveling together. So he was still a friend when I was undergrad with like in the same university and the other ones like Lushon and all. So we had like tra- traveling planned. Uh, and luckily for us, we didn't postpone our traveling to say, well, a lot of people did that. They said, um, usually the semester is going to end towards mm-hmm. summer and that's when you're going to going to start traveling. And with us, we had like, we made plans to say, okay, from the moment you get there, what are we doing? Uh, I met friends at the university as well, uh, who became travel partners. So what we do is we'd like, go to different cities to just, you know, have, have a look and to some um, uh, historical sites, for example. I know, I remember one uh, incident where KB and I went to watch uh, Manchester United from Old Trafford, I think they were playing cold test or something. And so that's a big of, deal. Watching it's, it's such a great English deal. And Premier League. The English, wow. yeah. And what happened in that incident was he got the tickets online. It looks like they were like in the secondary market where someone had like privileges. Like let's say he was an executive. He was he had like executive membership, or whatever membership of the club of Manchester. And he's like, oh, I don't want to attend this. So he put them up online mm-hmm. and bought them. And we got there, we didn't know where we were like going to sit. And then we walked around the, the, the stadium asking, yeah, asking the security guards, where, where is this thing? Where is this thing? <laughs> and none of them knew, none of them knew until we got to a point where one of them knew and we didn't know that it was like the VIP section, you know, and you got like, like a different treatment. Like you got there, like, oh, oh take off your jackets, put them there. What do you guys want to have? And it, only clicked later that actually we had like VIP tickets in a sense where during the match, I mean, I mean, before the match, there's a like nice place where you sit, it's nice and warm. They serve you coffee, they serve you whatever. And then when the match is on break, half time, also go back, you get to meet with the other guys. You know, it was it was a it's a really nice experience. And I think it happened by mistake, but <laughs> I think it was it was a nice experience. We also got to like travel to other cities as well, like uh I went to uh, Scotland, we went to London a lot of times, mm-hmm. Stonehenge, mm-hmm. City of Bath. I know you love it so much. <laughs> yeah. <I'm a> <laughs> yeah. And 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 yeah, talking of the people in the UK and their culture, like they they're very nice people. Uh I think one thing that was like a shock for me was the language. I was in Leeds, it's it's part of Yorkshire, and they had that funny Yorkshire accent, which yes was so hard to get when I got there. You sort of get used to it, but it's really hard. And it's funny because we live for the UK thinking, ah, I understand English, but you get there, <laughs> like, what are these people talking, you know? Yeah. And I also got to experience a proper Christmas, like English, okay, British Christmas with my aunt. So she invited me over with her family and I got to like spend Christmas there. There was techie, there was like all the nice things. So for me, it was like a really nice experience, yeah. Oh, wow. Sounds like you had a great time. And I'm sure everyone watching would want to experience it. Yeah, they have better an apply. opportunity to apply. <laughs> they better apply. Like, it's, it's, it's one experience that you can't trade. I was telling someone that usually we look at things differently. Like, I can buy this. But I think experiences like time, it's one of the few things in life that you really can't buy. Like, you can't, you can't say I want to buy the experience of being in the UK or yeah you may come back without a job or without so much money in your pocket but the experience that you get it's like a lifetime experience now i have lies that i can tell to my to my grandkids you know what i mean yeah (laughs) Yeah. oh wow we can go on and on and on but honestly for me uh, my shivening experience has been the best i'm still waiting for something to top it and it's been four years now because i returned in 2018 so yeah. already I'm still waiting for a better experience. But like you're saying, experience is the best teacher and no one can ever take it away from you. That's true. Yeah. 
Yeah, That's thank true. you so much for coming to the channel. I thank you for it. having me. I enjoyed it so much, and I hope more of us yeah. will apply. And guys, we are all available. You can inbox us on our social medias. Yeah. You can ask any other questions that you have on this video below. Just comment with yeah. anything that you want to ask us. I know Tulane yeah. is very open to answering any yeah. other questions that you guys may have. Thank you so much yeah. for watching. Thank you for coming to Lani. I'll see you guys thanks, in the Pinky. next episode. All right. Thanks, Pinky. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.